Well, Police Commissioner Dermot Shea will soon be moving on from the department that he has called home for decades. But so much has happened during his two year tenure COVID, the murder of George Floyd, bail reform. We sat down for a lengthy interview and I did ask him to look back at everything from the way his police force has met all of these challenges over the past two years to the job he's done leading New York's 36,000 uniformed officers. I left it all on the on the court, right? I mean, I've accomplished uh, more than I ever thought on this job. Um, this job and the people of this city, I feel like the luckiest person in the world. Was there a missed opportunity somewhere along the way that maybe you could have done a better job at? Well, there's always, there's always things. Uh, I'm trying to get a job here, Dan, so I'm not going to recount my failures, but... Uh, it's not, I wouldn't say a failure. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm kidding. The one thing that I, I, I wish there was more time for, reorganizing the department, getting leaner, getting more efficient, doing things differently. So on the administrative side, there's a lot that, you know, potentially could have been done. And the reason I said at the height of the pandemic, there was so much uncertainty that there were people that were fearful. Yes. And then came the murder of George Floyd. And that ignited an entire conversation around policing in America. When you heard about that death, how did that effectively change the way you were going to lead your department? Well, and I would say that, remember, before COVID ever became a story, we had over 20% crime increases in New York City. So that was another layer to it. George Floyd changed everything overnight. You know, we were, we had weathered COVID, or so we thought at the time. Spring was upon us. We were starting to get out from the apartments and from the houses and, you know, enjoy the parks and uh, our first gatherings and we need to be around each other. And um, the end of May, George Floyd. I remember hearing it before I saw it and I heard about it and uh, knew it sounded bad, but it changed immediately when you saw that video. You can be prepared for civil unrest. You can be prepared for demonstrations, movements. This was a little different, or at least in, in reflection, it feels that way in that it was, this was not a New York City event. This was worldwide. And, um, you know, we had tough times in New York City. Um, but when you look at what happened also in some other cities, whether it was looting or trying to burn down police precincts and taking over areas, you know, we had pieces of that here as well, maybe not to those extremes with the loss of life, but it was it was a challenge. There was looting and there was rioting on the streets. There was a lot happening on the streets of New York. Yep. And then came this Department of Investigation report on how the NYPD handled some of the peaceful protests. You're doing a lot of reflecting. You're at the end of your term here. Was everything handled and buttoned up as it should have been, or were there some things that went wrong and maybe some people who are owed an apology? Dan, during those days, we had police officers shot at, shot, stabbed, run over by cars. We had Molotov cocktails thrown at police stations, at occupied police cars. So that is, those are not spontaneous activities. You have to talk about, and the report should have addressed more, the planned nature, small numbers of people that were looking to tear down this country that we're looking to sow discord and lo looking to hijack a movement for their own nefarious purpose. What led to you saying, I'm gonna disband the plain clothes unit? Because it was around the same time that all this yeah. was happening. There's a lot of, co that's a complicated issue with a lot of pieces. The work never changes. I did the job. I led the men and women who um, went out on the street taking guns off violent people every day in the Bronx. So. There's people talking about it, but if you've done it, that's a different animal. So what, is your, what are your thoughts then on the mayor-elect wanting to bring back some form of that very unit? Well, I think it's a political slogan at this point. I, I think that, you know, he's going to do what he thinks is right. What I was getting to there is the work has never stopped. We, we have people out there um, taking guns off the street every day. 14 police officers shot over the last two years doing exactly that job. We're taking record numbers of guns off the street the last two years, more than in 25 years. What's changed, you're well aware, no one goes to jail. And you're creating an environment where people 
have no fear of carrying guns, and in fact, I think making some people that would not be inclined to carry guns, now they have to for their own survival. I mean, that's a disgrace in my opinion. So is bail reform what is leading to more shootings? 100%. And more gun possessions happening on the 100%. Streets? 100%. There is no doubt. You have the most professional police department in the world in New York City. We know exactly what drives crime and what makes things tick in this city. This is turning into politics, and public safety is not politics. I don't care if you're left, right, Democrat, Republican. I could care less about the politics of it. It is as plain as opening the paper and seeing a headline, what's happening in New York City, to me. I know the, the behind the scenes, I know the incarceration levels, I know how many gun arrests are made, what really happens to people. I know how to drive crime down and drive incarceration down, and by the way, I proved it. I think Eric Adams, though, is the man for it. I do. I think he gets it. Where do you see the state of New York City crime, better or worse than when you were handed the department? Two years ago? Yeah. Well, there's no doubt it's worse. I mean, there's, there's no doubt. If you're saying that's not the case, I mean, you're part of the problem. So does that weigh view. on you, knowing you're leaving that? Not at all. When no. people are burning down trees and police cars oh. and you let them go so they can do it again, I, I don't know who we're trying to fool here. People are fed up. I would be um, ashamed of the job I did if I didn't speak out. You have danced around in various interviews what is next for you. So I have. can yeah. Can you tell us what is no, next? I have no intention of telling you, Dan. <laughs> I'll keep uh, trying. Yes, you will. Um, I, I'm going to be working shortly after the new year. Um, I'll be in New York. That's my belief. And um, I'm really looking forward to the next chapter. I may surprise you with what the job is. You said you're staying in New York. So I guess that means you're staying a Mets fan. Well, always a Mets fan. Could you get a leader? Okay, uh, is you that think your next that, job? Are you the new general manager of the Mets? I probably should have been. Yeah, I probably should have been, but no, I am not the general manager of the Mets. All right, so he still has kept where he's going private for now, <laughs> but says he will be there in Times Square to watch the ball drop one final time as commissioner. There's a lot more that we discussed, and you can watch the full interview with the outgoing police commissioner. It's about 20 minutes in length. We're going to air it in its entirety on Sunday, December 27th on Picks on Politics. There's still a lot more to talk about with him. Yeah.